Hello there, I'm Jamie. Welcome to another session of Vista Expo Services. In this session, I'll be taking you through the process of downloading, merging and inserting GoWood 3 3D people in your scenes accurately. Also, you'll have a unique insight into the amazing process of adjusting 3D people in pose realistically. More often than not, your clients will ask you to add people in your renders or scenes to provide a sense of scale and to help tell a story. For instance, in this penthouse apartment, the client wanted to have a person using one of their sofas and another person interacting with the space. Either that or having someone using the kitchen or the balcony area. There are two ways of doing this. You can use 2D cutout people in pose after the render is completed or you can insert the 3D people in your scene. In this particular exercise, we'll be adding realistic 3D people in the scene using realistic 3D models from Gobble Tree website. To access them, simply Google Gobble Tree and click on their website link. In Gobble Tree website, we have the cutout people library and the 3D people. As mentioned earlier, for this exercise, we'll be using the 3D people. Click on the 3D people library. In here, you have a huge selection of 3D models to choose from. To narrow down your search, you can filter the selections by ethnicity, gender, season, age group, activity, level of detail, clothing, or keywords. Or simply scroll down the list to choose. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to choose this model here. To download it, simply click on that button. Next, we're going to download this woman here. You can check the 3D model by clicking on those arrows to see different camera angles. Once you've downloaded your models, they should appear as WinZip or WinRAR file in your folder. To extract the content, simply right click on one of or all the zip files and choose the option to extract here. Once extracted, your files will look similar to these ones in the different file formats. You also have the Maps folder the 3ds Max follow-up file and the standard. For this exercise we'll be using the 3ds Max follow-up file. You can open the file by double clicking it or by simply doing it in 3ds Max. Click on the Max button and choose to open. Select the 3ds Max follow-up file and click open. You should be prompted with a file load gamma and LUT settings mismatch dialog. Choose to adopt the files gamma and LUT settings. 3D files should look similar to this one. Expand the viewport by clicking on this button. Next, to measure the 3D model, click on the Help Us button and select the Tape tool. The current unit display is in centimeters. You can change it to meters by clicking on the Customize button and choosing the Unit Setup option. The metric display units is just for display purposes and will not affect the scale of the scene. Instead of displaying the units in centimeters, we will choose a meters option instead. Next, click and drag the tape tool to measure the model. As you can see, his height is around 1.8 meters, about 6 foot tall or thereabouts. The scale of the model seems to be correct. Let's delete the tape tool by pressing delete on your keyboard. To ensure all textures are pointing in the right folder, Click on the Max button. Choose the References option from the list and the Asset Tracking. The Asset Tracking dialog should now be prompted. All these location paths should have the OK status as opposed to Found. Otherwise these textures will be missing once the 3D model is merged into another 3ds Max file. To correct this, simply click on the first link path with the Found status and right click on it. Choose the option to browse. In the folder, right click and choose the display option to be details. Once the texture thumbnail appears in your preview, it's an indication that the texture was found in this folder. Click open. As you can see, the texture path now has the status of OK, which is great. Let's repeat the same action with the next texture path. Right click on it and choose a browse toggle and click open. Again, as you can see, the texture path now has the status of OK. Let's repeat the same action with the last texture path. The status of the texture path hasn't changed. 
Let's repeat the same action and select the actual text in the folder, which is GTT Metal Gray Composite 001 BNP. Click Open to load it. As you can see, the texture path status has now changed, which is great. Next, hold down the Control key on your keyboard and select all four texture paths. Right click and choose the option to resolve path UNC location. This should resolve any future missing texture paths. Next, let's save the file by clicking on the Max button. Choose the option to save as. Name it as underscore Jamie or any other name you wish and click Save. Close the dialog. Next, go back to your main 3ds Max file. To merge the 3D person, click on the Max button. Go to Import and choose to merge. Even for VRI proxy objects inside another Max file, the process would have been the same. To learn how to proxy objects, simply check one of my 3D courses or free tutorials in my YouTube channel or blog. Select the 3ds Max file we've just saved and corrected the texture paths. The merge dialog should be prompted. Select all objects inside and click OK to merge them all. Here you can see there are 8 objects selected. Next we are going to group them. To do so click on the group toolbar and choose the group. In the group dialog rename the group as men on the phone and click OK to close the dialog. Next expand the viewport. Click on the top left viewport and press T on your keyboard to convert the viewport into top. Change the viewport into wireframe by clicking on the text and choosing wireframe mode from the list. To move the group, right click and choose the move tool from the quad menu. Move the man into the space and zoom in when necessary. Move the bottom part of the guy so it touches on a wooden floor. To adjust the object's gizmo, open the hierarchy button. Click on the effect beaver only button. Move the gizmo to the base of the object. Next, click on the rotate toolbar and the scale button. This is to ensure the gizmo doesn't jump. Every time you move the pivot point gizmo, always click on those three buttons first. So when you move, rotate or scale this object, the gizmo will always be at the base. Once satisfied, click on the create panel to exit. There's actually a script to automatically adjust the pivot point gizmo to the base of the objects. I'll leave it in the links and descriptions. To measure the merged object, click on isolation button first. Click on the tape tool and measure it as previously done. Exit the isolation by clicking on the button again. Expand the viewport. In the camera viewport, select the guy, right click and choose the move tool. Begin moving the object towards the camera and in between the two tables. Right click and choose to rotate. Rotate and move the, the guy so he's facing the other sofa on the far left side. Because of the number of edge faces being displayed in the viewport, we can't see the textures properly. To crack this, click on the shader text and click on the edge faces option and disable it. Next, let's select the guy and the right group with the control key and click to isolate. Expand the viewport again. In the front viewport, click Ctrl and R to rotate the viewport. Turn the viewport into shaded and zoom in. Rotate again and zoom in. Move the feet up slightly so it's not too sank into the carpet. Press D on your keyboard to convert the view into top viewport. Convert the viewport back to wireframe. Select the camera viewport and expand it. Reposition the guy a bit more. Exit the isolation. The following step is to manage the woman's setting previously downloaded from Google Tree websites. She'll be sitting on a sofa and looking towards the guy on the phone. 
to merge, we'll follow the same steps as before. Locate, select and merge the follow of max file. Select all the content to merge and click OK. As you can see here, there are four objects selected. Again, let's group them as previously done. Rename it as Woman Sitting. Expand the viewport and zoom up in the top viewport. Right click and choose the Move tool. Move the group into the camera view. Select the camera viewport and expand it. As you can see, because we didn't correct the texture paths as previously done, the Merge 3D model open without the textures. Delete the group first. Go back to the previous Max file. Go to File and choose to Open. Locate, choose an open Max follow up file of the woman setting. Select it. As previously done, go to File, References and choose the Asset Tracking option. As you can see, the texture path status reads Found as opposed to OK. Only the top path has the status OK. Select the first texture path and right click on it. Choose the Browse option. Locate the Maps folder and find the texture. As you can see, the status has now changed to OK. Repeat this action with all other links as previously done. Resolve path to UNC location and save the file under a different name. There's a script called Relink Bitmaps which expedites this process automatically. I'll leave the link in descriptions and probably create a tutorial on how to use it at a later date. If you want to proxy this 3D model, simply check one of my other tutorials on my YouTube channel or my other courses. To merge the 3D model, follow the previous steps and place her near the sofa. As you can see, the textures are no longer missing. Move the sitting woman closer to the sofa. Isolate the 3D model. Expand the viewports. Open the group by selecting the group button and choosing to open. Select the stool and press the lead on your keyboard. Close the group by clicking group and choosing to close it. Maximize the camera viewport and exit the isolation. As you can see, there's a clear interaction between the guy standing and the girl sitting on the sofa. Reposition the guy a bit more so he's looking directly at the girl sitting. It also helps tell a story while they are both utilizing the space. The following step is to add object IDs to both 3D people. To do so, select and isolate the guy, open the group as previously shown, exit the isolation. To enter an object ID number, right click on the object and choose the object properties option. GBuffer group is where you type in the ID number. Click Cancel to close the dialog. Before entering a new ID number, we need to ensure ID numbers are not overlapping with any of the existing ID numbers already being used on other objects in front and behind the guy. To check this, simply select an object behind the guy. Right click and choose the Object Properties option. This one is Object ID 3. Select the table behind and check Object ID number. The table has the object ID 8. Select the carpet group and open it. Select the carpet and check its object ID number. The carpet object ID is number 3. Select the wooden floor and check the ID number. The floor ID is number 1. Select and check the building outside. It's ID number 2. 
Right. Select the guy and add the ID number 5 to it, as this number doesn't overlap with any of the other objects in front and behind it. Click OK to close the dialog. Check again to see if the ID number is not overlapping with the other objects. For the girl setting, we'll do the same to check the ID number of other objects behind and in front of her. Open any groups and check them individually. Select the girl and add the ID 5 to her. Also, check the skirting behind her to ensure there is no other object ID number found behind her. Let's also check other objects behind her. Select the girl again and open the group. Select the coffee cup and add a different ID number to it. Add the ID number 6. There's also a coffee inside a cup. Let's select it and add ID number 7 to it. We can obviously change it to another ID number for as long as it's not the same as objects directly behind or in front of it. To render this scene, we'll be using the same settings as previously shown in my other tutorials on my YouTube channel and courses on my blog. Again, simply check these detailed video courses about rendering settings and how to use and add multi matte render elements. Once the scene is rendered, the files should look similar to these ones here. This is the multi matte element for the guy. Each multi matte element is broken down into true representations of R, G, and B colors, which are easier to select in post. Again, if you want to learn how to set them up in detail, please check some of my other courses and tutorials on my blog and YouTube channel. For the girl sitting, this is a multi matte render element. As mentioned earlier, every multi matte render element comes with a true representation of R, G, and B colors. The render itself ended up looking like this one here. We can close the max file and open Adobe Photoshop. This is what the final post production file looked like with simple curves and adjustments. No specific adjustments have been made to the 3D people. At first glance, you may look at all these folder groups and immediately assume the Photoshop file is quite complex. All these group folders listed are minor adjustments made to the individual objects in the image. The only folder group making a huge impact to the render is the Adjustments Group folder. Turn the visibility on and off to see the massive difference it's making to the render. As mentioned earlier, all these other folder groups below are just minor tweaks made to individual objects in the image. Adjustments is the main folder group controlling the overall quality of the image. Open it to see a few adjustments used to control the overall quality of the image. You have the curves adjustment layer here. Turn off the visibility of all these adjustments so we can start breaking them down one by one. Turn on the visibility of the first curve. You can see the huge difference this one curve is making to the image. Turn on the visibility of the levels adjustment layer. Turn on the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Turn on the curtains folder group and levels outside. To find out the step by step process of rendering and putting together this interior daylight scene in post production, simply check the entire course on my blog or udemy.com. Alternatively, you can check my other free post production tutorials created on my YouTube channel and blog. This particular one is 27 minutes long and gives you a detailed step-by-step -step process of building post-production files in Photoshop. Most people would probably look at this image in 3D people and consider it complete. However, 
there are a few adjustments we can add to the 3D people to make them even more realistic than they currently are. To do so, let's start with a multi elements group. Open the multi elements group. Turn on the low visibility of the multi with the guy standing. Select it and open the channels tab. Hold on the control key and select the right channel thumbnail. The selection is now on. Because we just want the guy selected, let's enable the My Key tool. Hold on the All key to see the minus sign. Click and drag around the areas you want deselected. Only the guy is now selected. Go back to the Channels tab. Select the Coffee group because you want to create the next group on top of it, but below the Light Select group. Next, click on the Group button to create a new group folder. While the selection is still on, click on the Mask button to create a group mask. The mask will ensure all changes to this group will be contained within the group. Rename the group as Equal Man Standing Equal. Turn off the visibility of the multi mat layer. Next, let's create a selective color adjustment layer by clicking on Adjustment Layer button. Click Z on your keyboard and click to zoom in. As you can see, the shadows are a bit too sharp and the skin needs a bit more life to it to emulate subsurface scattering. His skin tone is slightly yellow. In a color selection, choose the yellows from the list. To check if that's the color seen by Photoshop, move the black slider to see if that's the color we want affected. Begin moving the yellow, magenta and cyan sliders until a reddish tone is achieved. As you can see, the skin is gradually coming to life with red tones. Also, add color balance adjustment layer on top. Move the top slider slightly towards the red. Zoom out to check the changes. Turn the group on and off to see the massive impact the latest adjustments is making to the guy standing. Next, we are going to ensure the red tones are only affecting the skin and not other parts of the body. First, let's clip the color balance layer against the selective color. To do so, hold down the ALT key from your keyboard and hover down slightly. When you see the clipping sign, simply click to clip it. Color balance layer is not connected to the selective color layer. If you turn off the selective color layer, the color balance will also turn itself off because they are both connected. Next, select the mask thumbnail of the selective color layer. As you may have noticed, all adjustment layers come with a mask thumbnail attached. The mask thumbnail works best with the black and white colors when using the brush tool. Black or dark colors take pixels away and white colors bring the pixels back up. You can switch the background colors by clicking on this button or by pressing X on your keyboard. So we want to remove the color balance and selective color effect from the trousers, t-shirt and so on. Click on a brush tool or press B on your keyboard. The opacity value of the brush is currently at 100%. If you click on that button, you have a list of brush sizes and options. Begin brushing by clicking and dragging the brush tool to take away the color effects on the shirt and the trousers. As mentioned earlier, Everything is happening inside the group with a mask. When using the brush, make sure the mask thumbnail is selected. Because these two are connected, whatever happens to this layer will also affect the layer above. Continue brushing away pixels.
zoom out to check the changes. As you can see, the color corrections to the skin made him way more realistic than he was and gave his subsurface scattering feel to it. This is the before and after the color corrections. The next step is to overemphasize some of the lights affecting his body. Open the light select group. Again, to understand how these light select layers were put together, please check my other tutorials of my YouTube channel, blog and courses. These are all the pre-rendered passes. Let's start by turning on and off each of these light select layers to see which ones are directly affecting the guy. We will also try to smooth out some of these hard shadows. As you can see, this light select pass is directly affecting the guy. Select the light select pass and add a layer mask to it by clicking on this button. Next, enable the brush tool by pressing B on your keyboard. Zoom in. Turn the light select pass on and off again. Enable the brush tool. Decrease the brush size by pressing the bracket key on your keyboard and begin brushing away pixels by clicking and dragging the brush. Also note the brush opacity is set to 12%. So the pixels are being taken away gradually and not abruptly. Zoom out to check the results. Zoom back and continue brushing away pixels and checking the last lap passes. Increase the brush opacity slightly to brush away the pixels more abruptly. Select the mask thumbnail again and continue brushing away the pixels. As you can see, the shadow edges caused by the light slap pass are being softened by gradually taking away its pixels. Click on a brush settings button to check its parameters. As you can see, the hardness is set to 0%, which makes the brush extremely soft around the edges. At 100%, the brush edges would be extremely hard. Again, let's turn the light select pass on and off to check other areas of the body being affected by the hard shadows and gradually brush pixels away on the relevant areas using the same techniques covered earlier.
the gas standing is now looking much better. To overemphasize the lights directly affecting his body, we are going to select and copy some of the light select passes. To do so, as previously done, hold down the O key and move down the light select pass into the main standing group. Place it under the selective color adjustment layer. Turn the light select pass on and off to see huge impact it's making. As you can see, it's inside a main standing group. The name of the light select pass is Vuray IES013. Let's also select the light pass Vuray IES004 and copy it into the main standing group as previously done. As mentioned earlier, we are overemphasizing the lights affecting this guy to make the 3D person more appealing and the overall image more compelling. Also, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top to desaturate the skin if necessary. Select the light select pass Vera IES003 and copy it into the main standing group as previously done. Now we have three light select passes inside the main standing group. By turning the layer on and off, you can clearly see the huge impact it's making to the 3D person, especially when you compare him against the other one, which hasn't been tweaked yet. We can also desaturate further the skin color by reducing the saturation values. Next, we are going to repeat the same actions with the woman setting to make it even more realistic. Let's start by turning on the multi mount layer visibility with a woman setting. Go to the channels tab, hold on the control key and select the green channel thumbnail. Go back to the layers tab and zoom out to see the other area selected. As previously done, select the rectangle marquee tool and hold on the all key to see the minus sign. Click and drag to deselect the other areas. Turn off the visibility of the multi mount layer. Zoom in closer, select the coffee cup group as the new group will be created on top of it. Click on the group button to create a new group. While the selection is still on, click on a mask button to create a new mask attached to the group. As you can see, a mask was added to the group. Any feature adjustments and layers added inside this group will be confined within the mask. The black areas are the areas not affected, and the white areas are the areas where changes will take effect. Rename the group as equal woman setting equal. To emphasize the woman, we're going to start with ambient light. Select and turn on and off the ambient light select pass. Hold on the control key and select the two layers. Next, 
hold down the O key and move them into the woman setting group. Both layers have now been copied into the woman setting group. Turn the window slight select pass on and off to check the difference it's making to the 3D girl. Let's emphasize the blue tones on her by selecting the photo filter and increasing its color density. Her window light blue tones are now closer to the wall color being affected by the same ambient light. Again, turn the window light select pass on and off to check the differences making to the 3D girl. Next, we are going to select and copy some of the skin color adjustments made to the 3D guy standing. Open the main standing group and select the selective color and color balance layers. As previously done, hold down the all key and move the layers into the woman sitting group. Both adjustment layers are now copied into the woman sitting group. Place them below the window light slight layer as it looks better that way. Turn the window light slight layer on and off to check its impact. Select the window light photo filter and increase its color density slightly. Select the selective color layer and turn it on and off to check the difference it's making. As you can see, she looks way more realistic with the latest adjustments. We can also reduce its opacity slightly. And increase the window light slight layer opacity slightly. Let's make a few other adjustments to make it perfect. Zoom out to check the overall effect. Turn on and off the visibility of the woman sitting group. As you can see, it's now looking way more realistic than before. Let's close all the open groups. Next, we are going to add a bit of glow around the windows to make the overall image more interesting to look at. Let's start by right clicking on the top edge of the document and choosing to duplicate. Turn on the visibility of this multi-mart layer and go to the channel tab. Hold on the control key and select the green channel thumbnail. Select the rectangle marquee tool and hold on the all key to see the minus sign. Click and draw around the girl to deselect her selection. Next, save the selection by clicking on the select toolbar and choosing to save selection. In the save selection dialog, name it as outside. Because it has been saved already, you can simply load it from the list and replace its name. Here is the selection mask just saved in the channels tab. Click on the RGB channel and go back to the layers tab. Next, select any layer. Right click and choose to flatten the image. While the selection is still on, go to edit toolbar and choose to copy and paste the layer. Move the document down to see the main document. Select our main document. Close the open groups. Open the adjustments group and select the levels outside layer. We are selecting this layer because you want the next copied layer to land on top of it. Select the previous document. 
Select the layer 1 and right click on it. Choose the duplicate the layer. In the duplicate layer dialog, choose the destination to be our main document. Rename it as Glow Outside. Select our main document. As you can see, the duplicated document landed here as anticipated. Before applying the glow effect, let's right click on a duplicated layer and choose to convert to Smart Object. Smart Object saves up most filters and actions applied to a layer, so we can edit them later if and when necessary. Close the other duplicated document. While the Smart Object layer is selected, click on Filter Toolbar. Go to Blur and choose a Gaussian Blur filter from the list. In a Gaussian Blur dialog, increase the radius by moving the slider to the right slightly. Click OK to close the dialog. Next, change the layer blending mode to a screen type. Turn the layer on and off. This layer being a smart object, you can see the Gaussian Blur filter recorded to it. To edit the Gaussian Blur, Simply double click on the Gaussian Blur text to bring up its dialog. You can adjust the radius accordingly, if and when necessary. As you can see, the radius is now spreading beyond the 3D guy's shoulder, making the overall image more appealing. We can also reduce the layer intensity slightly. As you can see, the overall image is looking a lot more appealing as a result. Turn the layer on and off. We can adjust the glow settings a bit further. The next step is to add a bit of chromatic aberration. The chromatic aberration effect is often seen as an artifact in real photos. However, when applied to 3D renders, it makes them look more realistic. This effect is often visible around the edges of objects. To emulate this effect, let's start by right-clicking on the edge of the document and choosing to duplicate it. Next, select a layer and choose the option to flatten image. The flatten image option is, is only available on layers, not groups as you can see here. Select layer and choose the option to flatten image. Once flattened, zoom into the document by 100% by simply tapping in 100% here. Next, enable the Move tool by clicking on its toolbar by pressing V on your keyboard. Go to the Channels tab. Click on the right channel and nudge the document up by pressing on the up arrow on your keyboard once. Click on a green channel and nudge the document down by pressing down the arrow on your keyboard once. Click on a blue channel and nudge the document to the right by pressing the right arrow on your keyboard once. Click back on the RGB channel to display all the colors again. Now you can clearly see the chromatic aberration effect with red, blue and green colors around the edges of objects, which is consistent in real photos. Next, go back to the Layers tab. Click on the main document. Close Adjustments group. The chromatic aberration layer often goes on top of the Adjustments group. Select the chromatic aberration document again. Right click on a layer and choose to duplicate. Choose a destination to be our main document. Select our main document. That's the duplicated chromatic aberration layer. Rename it as chromatic aberration. Next, change its layer blending mode type to darker color. Chromatic aberration layer is now blended with the overall image.
We can also reduce its slow opacity slightly. Let's close the other duplicator document. Finally, we can make the image more interesting by adding a bit of steam coming from the coffee cup. To do so, let's go to File and open PNG file named Smoke. Here's the PNG file. Drag and drop the PNG file into our main document. Click Yes to the message. Again, as previously done, we're going to convert this layer into a smart object. Because we're going to scale down this layer, being a smart layer, it will retain the original quality of the document if you decide to scale back up. Let's rename the layer as Smoke. To scale down, press Ctrl and T on your keyboard. Next, hold down the Shift key to scale proportionately. Select the top right handle and click and drag down to scale down in proportion. Click Enter to exit the transform handles. Press V on your keyboard to enable the move tool and move the smoke layer inside the coffee cup. Enable the transform tool again by pressing Ctrl and T and adjust the smoke layer accordingly. Next, add the mask layer by clicking on this button. While the mask thumbnail is still selected, enable the brush tool and begin brushing away pixels around the top edges of the smoke. Use the same techniques covered earlier. Also, reduce the layer opacity slightly. To move the layer itself, select the layer and move it with the Move tool. Use some of the previous steps to adjust the smoke layer further. Next, duplicate the document and flatten it, as previously done. Go to File and choose to Save As. Choose the TIFF file format from the list. Rename it as Tutorial. Disable the Alpha Channels option. Keep the option to Save As Copy. Click Save and OK. Go to File and choose to Save As again. Choose the JPEG file format from the list. Rename it again and click Save. Choose the maximum quality at 12 and OK to save the file. Next, select the main PST document and save it as PST document under the name of Final. As you can see, in the PST version, we kept the layers and the Alpha Channels option.
This concludes our course on how to integrate 3D people in your scenes realistically. Don't forget to like and share this tutorial. In the next course, I'll take you through the amazing process of integrating 3D people in live shots using groundbreaking techniques from top production companies. To download all courses with project files and technical support, please click the link below. I really hope you've liked and found this course useful and hope to see you on my next one.